Okay, Foundations and Pre-Cal 10. Here's your first video, and it's going to be a bit of a refresher on factors, prime factors, and how to do a factor tree. I'll remind you that there are some uh, videos in the grade 9 section that cover similar topics here. So if you want a, another refresher there, you can always go back and watch a bigger one on divisibility properties. The divisibility properties come in handy when we are doing our factor trees because we want to know what we can divide our factors by, so or our, our products by. So if you have, say, 124, well, this number is even. I can divide it by 2. Um, this number, the last two digits are divisible by 4, so I could divide it by 4. Uh, 4 plus 2 is 6 plus 1 is 7, so I can't do divisible by 3. It's not, it doesn't equal a number that's divisible by 3. But this kind of helps you strategically determine, well, okay, well, what am I going to divide it by? So just to show you in action, well, why don't we divide this by 4, since we know we can. 4 goes into 12 three times, no remainder. 4 goes into 1 once. We're done. Uh, that was what we call short division. My first grade 9 video, video number 1 from the grade 9s, is about division. So if you want to see why short division works, uh, check that one out. I could do a quick little one here in the grade 10 section. So if you see it in this playlist, by all means, give it a quick watch. So um, that's divisibility by two, which is easy, even numbers, and then divisibility by four. Divisibility by three, let's just take a number similar to 124. Let's make it 126. Well, that number is divisible by two, so again, or even, so I can do that. 26 is not divisible by four, so I can't do that, but two plus six is eight, plus one is nine. And if you add the numbers up like that, add up the digits of the number, and the total is a number that is divisible by 3, the whole number is. So that means I can divide that by 3. 3 goes into 12 four times, no remainder. 3 goes into 6 twice. And then you could continue to divide this down however you want until you're left with only prime factors. So that covers uh, 2, 3, 4. 5 is easy. Ends in a 5 or a 0. Any number ends in a 5 or 0, you can divide by 5. 10 is easy. Has, number has to divide by 0. 9 is the same as 3, so we could use 126 in this example, because 1 plus 2 plus 6 is 9, and 9 is divisible by 9. So again, you could have just done 9. 9 goes into 12 once with 3 remainder. 9 goes into 36 4 times, and then we finish 2 times 7, and then here you get 3 times 3. Either way, you see you end up with two threes, a two, and a seven. It's going to work out the same, just different order. So nine and three are both fantastic. And then six is pretty cool, too. Uh, there is one for seven, but it's confusing, so just try and divide by seven. Um, but for six, six is two times three. So it means it has to be divisible by two and by three, which means it has to be even. And the sum of the digits has to be divisible by 3. So again, we can use that number 126. It's a good uh, good number for this example because it's even and we can divide it by 3, which means we can divide it by 6. 6 goes into 12 twice, no remainder goes into 6 once. And again, you'll see we get the exact same prime factor breakdown. So it doesn't matter which route you take, just know that you have a variety of, of routes possible depending on the product. Uh, use your divisibility properties to narrow down what you're dividing by. And then by all means, if you want to use your calculator, fine. But I'd like you to get in the habit of uh, stretching yourself mentally, do a bit of mental math here, and work on division using factor trees. So what's the point? Well, the point is we're going to use this for lowest common multiple and greatest common factor. So let's look at this. Break them down into only primes. Well, this ends in a 0, which means it's divisible by 10. So that's going to be my go-to, 21 and 10. 21 I know is 3 times 7, and 10 I know is 2 times 5. Those are the ends of my branches. So 210 is equal to 2 times 3 times 5 times 7. That is what we call a prime number factorization. Now, 1,234. Well, it's an even number, so I know I can divide it by 2. And then I get 617. Now, here in we get a little issue. I have a video on composite numbers and prime numbers in my grade 9 playlist. Please watch it if this is going to be overly confusing. Now, you know a number's prime if it is only divisible by 1 and itself, which means if it's composite, it has prime factors. 
So if we want to determine if a number is prime, we only need to test and see if it has any prime factors, because if it isn't prime, it has prime factors. And the way factors work, if you consider the number uh, 36, you'd have 1 times 36, 2 times 18, um, 3 times 12, 4 times 9, 6 times 6. You see, you, as this goes up, this goes down, and you get a middle point which is its square root. So if you're unsure if 617 is a prime, you only need to try and divide it by prime numbers on one side of its square root. So grab your calculator, go, okay, well, the square root of 617 is 24.8-ish, which means if it had a list of factors on this side, only have to try prime numbers that are less than that number. So 23, 19, 17, uh, 13, 11, and then what? Uh, 7, 5, 3, and 2. Now it's not even, so we know it can't be divided by 2. It doesn't end at a 5 or a 0. The digits don't add up to a number divisible by 3. So we've already knocked off three of them. Can you divide 617 by 7? Just try. No. Can you divide it by 11? No. Can you divide it by 13? And you see, this is still a strategy, and it's a good strategy. It's the best strategy you have. Can you divide it by 17? No. Can you divide it by 19? No. So the only option we have left, if we can't divide 617 by 23, 617 is prime. And we cannot. So it means that's prime that's prime. So we have 2 times 617. Now, how is that going to help us? Well, it helps us for lowest common multiple and greatest common factor. Now, the lowest common multiple, this is the most important word. It needs to be a multiple. So what are the multiples of 24? 24, 48, 72, da, 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 da. What are the multiples of 60? 60, 120, 180, da, 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 da. And then same with 72. So there's no way the lowest common multiple will be a factor, which is where a lot of people go backwards. They see the word lowest and they think, oh, it's got to be uh, 12 or 4. No, it doesn't work. It can't be lower. It has to be a multiple. So what that means is each one of these numbers has a prime number factorization, which means 24 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. 60, 5 times 12, 3 times 4, you break these down however you want, I'm just going to break them down my way, is 2 times 2 times 3 times 5, and 72, which I know is 8 times 9, 2 times 4, 2 times 2, 3 times 3, I get 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. So in order to be a multiple of those numbers, Right? This is the number 24. So I need all of that to exist in my lowest common multiple. So if I'm going to make a multiple of 24, it needs to have the factors of 24 in it. These factors are the factors of 60. So in order to be a multiple of 60, I need two twos, a 3, and a 5. Well, I already have two twos and a 3. Well, really, I only need to include a 5. And then in order to be a multiple of, uh, which one's this, 72, I need three twos and two threes. Well, I have three twos right here. So I just need another three. And the blue is not the best, so I'm going to rewrite it in white. But you need one more three. So that is the prime number breakdown of my new multiple. It's two times two times two times three times three times five, which is eight times nine times five, which is 72 times five, which is 360. It is a multiple of each of those numbers, and it is the lowest one. So that is how the prime factors can help you out. Now I'll show you another way to look at it when we do um, greatest common factor. I'll do lowest common multiple at the same time. So I'll do both. 
And this way we go like this. We go, okay, well, 16 is two times eight, which is two times four, which is two times two. So 16 is two to the power of four. So I'm gonna write my uh, factors in columns of um, uh, common prime factors. So 36 is six times six, two times three, two times three. So 36 is two squared times three squared. And then 210, well, that gives me 21 times 10, three times seven, and two times five. So 210 is two times three times five times seven. So here's what you do. You put a column around each of your factors. In order to be the greatest common factor in this one, this is the most important word because we already have the factors. We need to be common to all three numbers, but only one of those columns has a factor that is common to all of them and it's a two. So then you look in that two column and you go, okay, well, which one of those factors appears the most in each of the numbers. So for 16, you have two to the power of four, but you don't have two to the power of four in the other ones. So we can't say two to the power of four. For 36, you have two squared. Now that would cover 16 and 36, but it doesn't cover 210. You see 210 only has one two, which means that is the only common factor and it is the greatest common factor. Now, lowest common multiple using this same approach is the opposite of what we just did. We took the lowest amount of times a factor occurs in everything, whereas for um, lowest common multiple, we are actually going to take the largest amount of times something occurs. Because what we need is we need to make sure everything is covered, right? So we need two to the power of four. We need three to the power of two. We need a five and we need a seven. So whereas our GCF has to be common to all of them, our lowest common multiple just has to make sure we have at least all of them from each one. So two to the four times three squared times five times seven. I'm not gonna calculate that out. You can plug that into your calculator, but that is how this is connected. So here's one more, 48, well, that's two times 24, two times 12, two times six, two times three. So 48 is two to the power of four times three. 136, well, 36 uh, ends, I can divide by four. So let's divide this thing by four. Four goes into 13 three times, one remainder. Four goes into 16 four times. I get two times 17. So for 136, you get two, I'm sorry, four is two times two. So two cubed, no three, 17. So again, let's make our columns. Greatest common factor. Well, the only one that's common to both is a two. And how many times does it occur the least? Two cubed. So the greatest common factor is two cubed, which is eight. Lowest common multiple, remember, is the opposite. I need representation of everything. So I, this time I need two to the four, I need a three, and I need a 17. So the lowest common multiple, two to the four times three times 17. I can throw up an extra small video for this, and I'll, we'll go over this in class extensively, and you do have it all in your notes, which is also linked in the description of this video. So good luck with this one. Um, it could be a little challenging, but we'll get you there. Thank you and subscribe. You'll get notified when I post new videos.